thank you everyone for um, coming along to, to listen to this. I'm very excited to share with you this presentation as it was, it formed the dissertation for my master's in music education in the Royal College of Music, which I've just completed. So fresh off the carousel, so to speak. And I was fascinated for my study to work with multi-instrument teachers in Ireland. Uh, so before I go dive in, I'm just going to whet your appetite a little bit about my six participants, my six teacher participants. I'm gonna share a couple of quotes that really stood out to me and had a profound effect on me as the study was taking place. This first quote is from a participant who hated his own piano lessons when he was a kid, signed up by his mom, three years into doing piano lessons and just going through the motions. They're putting up the Christmas tree at home and they have the TV on and the MTV Unplugged concert by Nirvana comes on and his ears literally perk up. And, he's, and as he was recalling this memory to me in our interview, he said, I loved it. It clicked with me. You're supposed to like music. This second quote was from one of the participants who was recalling some of her uh, music experiences in her BA in performance. So she'd already studied music throughout school and she was now studying at a third level, but it wasn't until she had a jazz module in her performance degree, being a classically trained player of several instruments that she said this about the memory of doing a jazz module of piano. I feel like I have ownership of the piano for the first time in my life. So have a think about that. And this final one I'm gonna share for now is one participant's perception of what it might be like to attend a professional development organized event through a teacher society or any similar kind of institution, having not been exposed to any professional development before. She said, sometimes with piano, it's very snobby. I think it would ruin it a little bit for me. So I, I thought that was quite striking. And uh, hopefully I, I, what I'll, I'll share with you is a little bit more of the, the findings that these presented. So to start off with, who am I and what, what, how did I get interested in this topic? Well, I am a piano teacher and I set up a piano studio to do this full time starting five years ago, but really I've been teaching piano for like 25 years. But along the way, I've met plenty of other teachers who teach piano as their second instrument, the guitar players, the wind instrumentalists, the violin teachers, the vocalists. And I started to become really curious about how all of these, you know, varied multi-instruments add piano into their portfolio. Um, because it's it's quite an important part of their uh, income. And so I decided to pursue this as the topic of my dissertation. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about my little island and the context of the instrument tuition here. So like with so many countries, instrument tuition is like as a profession is an unregulated in industry. So in addition, though, we don't have any like national body of data on the demographics and the characteristics of our instrument teachers. So we don't know the spread, the, the instruments and anything like that. But a study from this year did reveal that 85 percent of instrument tuition nationally is reliant on private fee paying tuition. So we really do not have um, public, uh, publicly provided or government provided um, instrument tuition um, and where it is available it's to a very very low level. So in pursuing this topic I wanted to check with the literature you know how what are the pathways to teaching that we know about so far. So for many getting into instrument tuition can be an unplanned career choice and they and quite often it's that uh, people can enter it's instrument tuition by invitation, a trusted colleague or friend, and it kind of happens by accident as well. It's uh, it's it's um, it's for the it's they have a love of music, but it's something that we that they haven't perhaps intended. So there's my little guy stumbling into his new career of instrument tuition. Um, 
there's many pathways to get into teaching, but but there is some uniting characteristics, and that is that a lot of a lot of these teachers have had formal tuition themselves in their instruments. They've reached a, a, like a grade five theory level, perhaps a grade eight performance level, and achieved a bachelor's degree. However, there's a piece missing from all of these pathways, and that is that very few have had pedagogical training in their instruments along these pathways. And so they start their teaching endeavors with so much questions, so many questions and so many uh, stresses um, for how to shape their teaching because they just haven't been exposed or given the opportunity uh, for pedagogical training along the way. When it comes to their conceptions of our conceptions of teaching, um, very few studies have been done with multi-instrument teachers specifically, which was the subject of my study, of course. And But what has been found out is that it's their versatility specifically that adds such a value to music institutions. And they can interchange between these roles of teacher, accompanist, fellow player, and this gives their, their own professional identity such a fluidity that at any given moment and teaching context, they can blend and swap in and swap out these identities in, in such a seamless manner. And they're highly, highly valued by um, their, their employers. But it was in seeking to better understand these teachers, I was inspired by a review paper by uh, Pellegrino published in 2009, which stated that researchers should focus on lives of teachers' methodologies that would encapsulate past personal and institutional influences to examine music teachers practice in a holistic way and should also illuminate the significance of teachers musical experiences on them as professionals, as people and on their students learning either as separate elements or in combination. So this really shaped my study that to become in-depth interviews um, with teachers to understand their lived experiences. The literature in looking at pers perspectives and experiences of professional development has established that there is a number of key factors that determine levels of interest. So depending what career stage instrument teachers are at, their level of teaching qualification and their own um, locality, urban versus rural, all feed into where their interest lies. In, in relation to career stage, it has been established that later and later into career, it seems that interest in professional development grows and this feeling of giving back um, to, to the profession and um, mentoring younger teachers uh, was, was a great finding from one paper. What one, uh, what one study did find out though, there was evidence to suggest that there is lower instrument in lower interest in professional development if piano is the secondary instrument. So this definitely had implications for my study. However, what was recognized from all of these papers was that instrument teachers highly value meeting other instrument teachers, informal interactions and collaborations, whether that's through Facebook groups, um, virtual groups, in person, it doesn't matter. It's, it's teachers getting to talk to other teachers because Let's face it, it can be lonely. We're there in our studio, we're self-employed, freelance, even being employed in a school, you're in your, in your room giving individual lessons on your own. Independent or self-directed activities were, are also highly valued. So teachers are placing a real value on their own personal practice time and improving their own proficiency, reading, attending concerts. So all of these fed into what they would consider and professional development activities. So gathering all this together, it did reveal that there seemed to be a, a huge gap in, under, in the research for understanding multi-instrument teachers and their practices better. And this, this informed the research questions you can see here. So I set out to understand uh, pathways that lead these teachers to a career in teaching in Ireland how those pathways shape their conceptions of teaching piano as their second instrument. And then do they engage in professional development for this second instrument? And what are their perceptions of access to that professional development? So here are some of the findings. 
In relation to the pathways, we found that from the six, or I found from the six participants that there was formal tuition and a BA performance experience by all of them. So the BA was in their primary instrument, but keyboard skills were to uh, were, were nourished along the way. Following the degrees, half the participants, three out of six, veered off and, and into different directions, different life directions. But teaching their instruments was never part of their career plan. And again coming back to my guy stumbling here on the road, they fell into it for, for one reason or another. Um, but again, it was by, more than likely it was by encouragement and invitation from trusted peers and colleagues. However, for the other three, there was a very deliberate uh, choice to continue instrument teaching post-college. And I say continue because these are the uh, participants that were already teaching their instruments during their degree or even earlier, perhaps even by the time they were finishing school. So this was very much for uh, in, in their identity as they saw themselves uh, moving forward after college. In terms of transitioning to teaching, um, the participants talked about some of the some of the difficulties that and um, in the ways that they felt unsupported when they started teaching and decisions they had to make and the burden of responsibility. And one of the things that really interested me to hear about was how stressful it was to try and choose the tutor books that they would decide to teach from. So again, I think this feeds back to not having the exposure, even in an informal way, to pedagogical skills training with their own instrument teachers. They suddenly had this felt it felt like this huge decision to make. How were they going to teach was going to be through the selection of the book, the tutor books. What I was really interested to find as well is that all these teachers, if it was primarily guitar, vocalist, violin teacher, string teacher, they all found teaching piano easier than their primary instrument. And I was I, I was baffled by that. And they all said the same thing. It's because it just, just produces sound straight away. You go over to a key, you press it, you've got music. So for younger beginners, they felt this was, you know, this is their easy teaching because with their other instruments, there's physicality, there's more body parts involved, more technique even to produce the first sounds. So teaching piano is coming across as like a light relief for them. Just so, so interesting. However, if they haven't reached um, more than intermediate level in their own piano levels, they their own self-perceived proficiency did affect their confidence levels in teaching piano. So in the case of those participants, they would spend much more time in preparation for their lessons because for those of their students that are nearly catching up with them, they're, uh, they're so, they're so conscious about keeping ahead of their students. And what I was really fascinated to hear about their teaching philosophy was that despite going through formal tuition and achieving grade exams themselves, they rarely put their own students through grade exams. And this would be in contrast to what the literature has told us. We have, we have, we have an understanding that teachers will more than likely teach in the way they were taught and continue the status quo. But they're changing, they're changing the status quo for their students. And this, this was really, really interesting to hear. So I'll speed up a bit as I know uh, time, is, time is marching on. So in this sort of tiered level, I've tried to display what they talked about in terms of their interest levels and their perspectives in professional development. Again, as we expected, they're very self-sufficient because they have so much rich music experiences themselves from the different instruments that they've learned, they've been able to play in chamber groups and orchestras and choirs, and piano has been kind of tagging along all the way through those. They're very happy to look up piano or teaching resources themselves in their own time, in their own, in, and when they're comfortable. But they are over-reliant on a close and trusted network of peers. So it would seem that this cohort of teachers could really benefit from more um, organized but informal interactions with other teachers. Um, it, was the te it was the participants who were uh, 
looking to teach as a deliberate career choice that cited organized events as a professional uh, development activity of choice. So this is prob this this wasn't a surprising result, but the other activities that were did come uh, mentioned by at least half the participants were the uh, continuing their own formal piano tuition, letting their students students needs evolve what they would uh, pursue in, for professional development and taking some additional piano pedagogy or indeed their first piano pedagogy training if they could. So very quickly, what I'll sum up to say is that the results of this study have raised huge opportunities, I think, for further studies. And first in these is how could we embed pedagogy skills earlier in music apprenticeships? Even at third level performance degrees, they're in Ireland anyway, these are optional modules. And this is you know, going to be to the detriment because of the of the graduates because there's no doubt that they're going to be teaching in some form or, or, or other if, but after college if they haven't started teaching already. So how can we champion the private studio, the freelance instrument teacher to start um, training, if you like, the, the, the how fulfilling and rewarding teaching will be earlier in the, their students' apprenticeship? I think that'll be a fascinating study. Looking at the transition to teaching, I think if you do go into employment in a music school, I think definitely the music school should share the responsibility of providing um, professional development opportunities. There, it's a huge transition to go into the world of teaching. You're very isolated and the support systems need to be much greater. So coaching, mentorship, peer, peer mentoring within a school with a more senior teacher, these are all things that these participants are calling out for. And finally, the, the providers. We, I totally agree with previous studies that have called for more unitized, individualized, um, modular professional development opportunities. The, these huge courses may not be relevant enough for these multi-instrument teachers. They've got to be much more accessible and at an affordable rate to, 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 to grab them, to inspire them to, to invest in piano teaching, professional development, even though it's their second instrument. So here's my very brief references list. And I want to say thank you very much. And uh, I hope to uh, answer any questions you may have.